This is the new Lakato Looper and Drum Pedal, and as much fun as I've had playing around with it, I'm going to give it away for free. Stay tuned to see how it could become yours. Before we go any further, let's talk about how you can enter the contest to win this pedal. Now, first of all, I have to limit it to US residents only. I made the mistake with my last contest of opening it up to the entire world and my friend from Serbia won. And unfortunately, the uh, prize never made it there. So I've learned my lesson. It's just too risky and pricey to ship all over the world. So I'm sorry about that, but US residents only. Secondly, I'm going to put a link to the contest in the description below. I'm also going to pin a comment to the top of the comment section. Follow that link and the instructions should be pretty self-explanatory. Third, the contest will last two weeks from the posting of this video. That's it. Good luck. All right, let's get into the pedal and its features. So we'll just go around the outside here for starters. On the right side, you have input right, input left, and external controller. So if you only have one input, you would obviously go into this one to be mono. So input left, if you do have some like spatial stereo delays or reverbs and you want to use that uh, stereo, then you would obviously use both of these. I haven't personally used that. I didn't do it in the demonstration at the beginning of the video. It was just mono, um, but that is a nice feature to have. And obviously it correlates to the outputs. So external controller, uh, I also have not used this from what I understand from the instruction booklet. No, I don't think this, yeah, it'll stay like that. So let's go ahead and look at the booklet a little bit, the instruction manual. It's actually, I guess, not a booklet. It's more of a fold out deal like this. So I'm going to quickly go to that section for the external controller. Okay, so here you go. This is the, uh, I guess, like a visual of the external controller. Obviously, they are showing a two button controller. So up and down and to basically summarize what they're saying here. And we'll talk about this as well more. But there's two sections of the pedal, really. There's the looper section and the rhythm section uh, for both the up button or I guess the first button would go up the list and the down button would go down the list and then if you push both simultaneously it would switch between the looper and the rhythm sections of the pedal so hold that thought as we go deeper into the pedal and i'll explain what the looper and rhythm sections are okay now that we've talked about the right side let's keep moving around the pedal we'll go to the back here so uh, obviously you need to have power and there is no option for a battery at least i'm pretty sure there's not there's no compartment I didn't see anything in the manual so power supply only it does not come with the power supply but any old basic nine volt battery power supply will work so if you own essentially any guitar pedal ever made known to man you should have a nine volt power supply that will work over here we got a usb-c for connecting the pedal to your computer now this does not power the pedal that i know of you would have to have the power supply this is really only for the um, software and I'll show you that later and it doesn't really control the pedal at all either in a live setting. It basically just manipulates the memory banks for the pedal. All right, moving on to the other side, uh, the output, it's pretty much what you would expect. You've got a left out. So if you're only using one cable in and out, you would use the left. And obviously if you're going stereo, you would use the right. Okay, let's go to the top of the pedal and look at the rest of the features. Okay, so I'm going to kind of plug into the pedal as I go. So on the right here, of course, we're going in mono and again on the left mono out 
And of course we have our power connection at the top, like we talked about. So we should be getting power here in a second. And there we go. The Kato. And um, right now we are in the looper side. So just kind of big picture, the two sections like we talked about are looper on the left and rhythm on the right. And we have down here is sort of your, as it says, recording and overdubbing and tap tempo down here, stop play clear. I guess the blue, yeah, so tap and stop play is really only for the rhythm section. So it's in that blue sort of motif and font. And then the looper is in white and it has these functions that you see here. So just kind of as we go through here, you, I don't know, I think there's, yeah, I think there's 40 memory banks. So a lot of options there. And again, with the software, you can um, import and export, like I'll explain a little bit later. But there are 40, you know, memory banks that you can choose from and load up and recall as you wish. But if you push this button, it will go down here, which is the fade out, which I'll explain kind of later. It basically, when you stop your loop, it will just fade it out instead of cutting it off really quickly. And then the level, this is going to apply only to the recorded portion of your loop. So this does have a drum section in the pedal that's going to play with you. If you have this button pushed down, which I'll, I'm going to explain more. Yeah, so this will um, only control, say if you're recording guitar, it's only going to re, it's only going to affect the guitar volume. Okay, so now let's jump over to the rhythm side. To get over to that, you can push these simultaneously. I think you can also just, yeah, you can just tap or push down on either one of these and it will switch. But again, you can push these simultaneously and it will also switch. So at the top, you have all of your rhythm sounds. So I'm going to go through some of these, um, just kind of sample those. Uh, we'll listen to a section, a cross section of those, but this is how you get to them and you just kind of scroll through. So then pushing it again, it gives you your BPM. Now you can move this like so. You can go up and down for your BPM. You can also tap it in with the tempo here. So I do like this, you know, and I can get faster. It'll do that. So that is that. And then you have the volume, push this down again, and this controls the volume of the drum sounds. So you can kind of do a little bit of mixing of the sounds that you have. Okay, really quick, I wanna go through some of the drum sounds that are in the pedal. It has over 100 grooves, as the instruction manual says, in different categories, like we're looking at here, pop, for example. So let's just listen to this. And as we go through here, you can do 10 different subcategories of pop. So. Number three. Fourth, five, six, and so on through ten. So then we can move on from there to rock. So we'll listen to some of those. Of course, it has some six eight and three quarter uh, time grooves. Most of them are four four. So let's just go through a couple more here. Those are pretty cool, I have to say. I'm not really a metal player, but those would be pretty fun to play too, I imagine, if you were into metal. Let's keep going here into disco. Now, this loop here, this drum sound, disco one, I believe, is the one I used for the uh, sound on the intro, the little loop. So let's listen to that. I think it was a little faster tempo, but that's the, uh, the sound, so. Now we're in funk, keep going. We got blues, we got hip hop, which I have to say is also pretty sweet. And 
then we got jazz, which again is pretty nice. Let's go to Latin. Fusion, we got a three quarter time there. Five, four, which is fun. Seven, eight. Seven, eight, nine, eight, eleven, eight. So that's just pretty crazy. Uh, and then now we have metronome. So just simple. We got that one. Two, four, half time, or yeah, three, four. Five, four, six, eight, seven, eight, nine, eight, ten, eight, eleven, eight, and twelve, eight. So that is pretty much the drum sounds. Hopefully that wasn't like too much at one time. Uh, it would be too much, I think, to go through and listen to every one of them. But I just wanted to give you uh, a taste of what's in there. There's a lot of stuff, so it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to set this to, I'm going to go to funk. I think it's... Where was Funk at? I think Funk's after Disco. I'm going to go to 9, and then I'm going to go make sure it's on 100 BPM. And my volume, if you want to know, is at 9 for the drums. I'm going to go back over here to the memory bank, and let's see if we can get some kind of loop going to demonstrate some more of the features. I'm going to start out by hitting this record dub switch, and as I do, you'll hear a count in, which I believe is a really nice feature to have. Okay, so here we go. So now what I can do is hit the record dub again. I'll let it play and go around as if I was doing it like, you know, in a live kind of deal. But I'll add that second uh, layer over the loop and then we'll go through some of these functions over here. So let's, uh, let's let it play through and then I'll hit the dub. So we can stop with this button always, you know, basically as it says, stop, play. So hopefully you can see as I did that, what the record and dub functions do. And I will say that it has a four minute limit. So you could technically hit the record button and do something for four minutes long and then dub over that limitlessly as far as I understand it from the manual. Of course, this is a short little demonstration and example but that's kind of what's going on. So I want to explain over here this kind of clearing stuff. So I'll play it and what I'll do is hold down this switch for like two seconds and what it will do is it'll undo the last layer and then I can push this down again for two seconds and it will redo that layer. So let's watch that happen. So it says undo, so that layer is gone. Now we'll do it again. And it's back. And if you hold down the stop clear button when the loop is stopped, it will actually clear out the entire loop and get rid of all that stuff you just recorded. Uh, I want to show you real quick, if you hold down the looper button and go to fade out, as I've been stopping it, it's just been totally cutting it off. So like, like that. But if now we increase this up, I think the max is five seconds. So if we do that and then we stop it, you'll hear it fade out. Which is a pretty cool feature to have. Again, you can you know, make it to your liking between zero and five seconds. I'm going to put it back to zero there. The level, we'll play around with this a little bit. So this is, again, the re recorded uh, guitar level. So I'm gonna move that up and down and hopefully you'll be able to hear it change. Now, 
let's go over again to this side real quick. I'm going to hold that down and we'll listen to the drum volume change. So how do I do that? I think I have to do that separately. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. Okay. Yeah, so turn this down. the idea you can change the levels of the drum versus the recorded guitar bass whatever that you're coming into the pedal with so that's a pretty cool feature now this merger dot here this little button it basically locks in the loop and the drum machine to the tempo so if i were to click that it would only i'm going to push play and it'll only play the guitar part that i recorded I can't push this while it's playing and bring it back like that. I could do this. Um, but as you can hear, you run the risk of getting it off sync, you know, if you do it that way. But yeah, if you push this down, it will link those up so that when you hit this, the drums are in and the loop is in and they're both on tempo or they're locked into the BPM. Again, if you click this off, um, I think we can just, yeah. So then we could just play the drum sounds again. One other thing I want to mention real quick, let's go back here. I really like the fact that as you, you know, you can tell I've just got this on my desk and I'm, I'm sitting here with it at like, you know, waist level, which, you know, and I'm recording the loop and typically any kind of looper I've ever used, I've only really used like Line 6 products, I'm starting with like the DL4, and I had like the M9, and I had the, I still have the Helix HXFX, and now I have the, the Helix, the big one. And all of those, the looper, you really have to be like on your game, on tempo, and you have to click this, the loop or the stop button on the exact, you know, moment that it loops around. And you have to keep tempo and be really good at that. But with this one, you know, I'm sitting here playing my guitar and I could move my hand over and click the stop or redub or dub switches and it would like keep it in the loop. So as it comes around, it almost like does a blending. Like if you've ever done any kind of editing with audio or video, you know, you can like crossfade and it almost does like a crossfade when it comes back around so that it blends in that that starting point and ending point so that it doesn't cut it off or sound like a clip or sound weird so let's just listen again the smoothness of the transition as it comes back around and just for kicks let's go back to this so you can see the, the timing Okay, so that's a pretty cool feature. I really like that about this pedal. And one other thing I'll show you really quick, you can change the groove sounds that you are using with the loop you've already recorded. So let's let's play it, then we'll go over here and we'll only change the groove sound or the drum sound. So I'm gonna go to like five or four. Let's go to four. probably getting sick of that loop but you get the point you can change those drum sounds after you've already recorded your loop and uh, that's actually about it i think i've gone through everything i wanted to show you again i haven't used the stereo functions or the external foot switch but you know there's a ton more you can do you know more than anything for me just to practice really quick plug it in you know and put on a drum sample and it's locked in and it's kind of like playing with a drummer right you got to be in time and it's good for you to kind of work on your chops and your timing. I will say, of course, that there are no effects or, you know, sounds in the pedal. So, for example, when I was using 
when I did the loop at the beginning of the video, I was using my Helix for all of the sounds and I was switching, you know, from overdrive and some distortions and stuff like that on the Helix. And that's not an option in here. So you would have to have, if you want, you know, your guitar sounds, you could either go from an amp into this out or into a pedal board and and then into an amp and then out to this or what have you if you wanted to use it live and get your guitar sounds to change you know while i've been demonstrating it here i've just been going into logic straight in with the guitar into the pedal no kind of sounds or um, effects anyway that's about it but before i go i want to show you the software really quickly and that'll be a wrap Okay, so this is the software. It's pretty simple, uh, not much to it. Over here on the left, it tells you whether or not you're connected. Of course I am, it says USB connect. Um, over here, you can erase everything and restore the pedal back to its default settings. You've got some contact information over here for Lakato. And this is the, the meat and potatoes of the software. Basically, interesting enough, it says memory up here instead of memory, but it's basically a place where you can import and export your memory uh, banks your loops so you can if you already have something recorded of course you can go over here and click export and if you don't have something in a slot like down here you can import something into that slot so it's a good way to save tons and tons of loops if you have and you know a, a lot that you want to um, put on your computer and not have on the pedal you can do that and of course you can trash them as well and that's pretty much it. It does say in the manual that you can select more than one at once, more than one loop using like shift or something. I have a Mac, but I haven't been able to do that. I've only been able to click one at a time. It also does say that it only exports the audio sound from the loop. So it doesn't record or capture the drum sound, which is pretty good, I think, because you could take it and, and put it back in the pedal and then choose whatever drum sound you wanted to and not be stuck with that particular drum sound. And that is the software and everything you need to know about this Lakato looper and drum pedal. Thanks for watching. I want to say a special thank you to my friend Michael for letting me borrow his HSS Fender Deluxe Stratocaster for this video. Don't forget about the contest. Link is below. Again, U.S. residents only. Also, like, comment, share, subscribe. See ya. Going